In today's show, Bitcoin returns to test $40,000 as macro factors pile up to squash the Bitcoin bulls. In today's show, I'll be breaking down the latest technical analysis and as shared here by CryptoEd. So we really need that fifth leg. A deeper drop from here is bad news for the possibility of that fifth leg, especially when losing 40,000 again. We can skip the bullish vibes and start looking for shorts. Bullish above 42,000, bearish below. 40k and quoting u.s senator ted cruz texas should be ground zero for the bitcoin and crypto industry worldwide and this just in justin bieber's manager scooter braun has sold his texas mansion for 18 and a half million dollars in bitcoin and more breaking news bitcoin and usdt tether become legal tender in lugano switzerland that's right this is a pretty big deal as residents of the switzerland city will be able to pay their taxes parking tickets and public services as well as tuition fees using crypto also in today's show is a full-blown crypto rally imminent macro guru raul pal says conditions mimicking the previous bull run quoting him here on crypto twitter this moment in crypto feels a lot like march 2020 back then we threw the worst possible news at it and it fell very sharply but failed to make a new low back then bitcoin turned up 10 days before the ndx but bonds led crypto cut to today negative eight percent inflation oil at 105 dollars seven hikes priced in plus qt with gs calling for 11 hikes and a war crypto failed to make new lows time to watch carefully yes this is a different time but price is suggesting that macro might get more positive for crypto also in today's show legendary investor bill miller says collapse of the russian ruble is very bullish for bitcoin as he shares here in this new interview on squawk box they have almost 50 percent of the reserves and currencies that are controlled by people who want to do them harm they have 22 percent in gold and that is only a part of their reserve that other countries can't control says bill miller on russia and also said it is very bullish for Bitcoin. Also in today's show, the Vera Group CEO, Nigel Green, says the Russia-Ukraine war can push the Bitcoin price to $50,000 soon. That's right, quoting him right here, as banks close, ATMs run out of money, threats of personal savings being taken to pay for the war, and the major international payment system SWIFT is weaponized, amongst other factors, the case for a viable, decentralized, borderless, tamper-proof, unconfiscatable monetary system has been laid bare. And assuming the Western world keeps imposing penalties on Russia, Bitcoin might tap $50,000 by the end of the month. We'll also be taking a look at the overall crypto market. As you can see, Bitcoin, Ether, and all the major alts are currently correcting and in the red. But where's the Bitcoin price likely to go next? Find out all this, plus so much more, in today's show. Here at Crypto News Alerts, I drop a brand new episode every single day. The goal is to get to 100,000 subs along with a $100,000 Bitcoin price. And if you like getting that crypto, be sure to smash that subscribe button and ring that bell to turn on all notifications to receive daily premium crypto news alerts every single day, just like this. And today's episode is brought to you by BlockFi, the number one leading provider of financial products and services for crypto investors. And right now you can get up to $250 in Bitcoin when you buy crypto or fund your account today with BlockFi. Be sure to use my referral link in the description right down below. Right now, there are more than 500,000 people and 350 institutions globally using BlockFi to manage over $10 billion in assets. And here are some of their flagship products, which includes their trading platform, where you can buy, sell, and trade the top cryptocurrencies. You can do instant trades with ACH. You can trade 24-7, 365. Another flagship product I love is their BlockFi Bitcoin Rewards Visa Credit Card, where you can earn an unlimited 1.5% back in Bitcoin on every thing you buy there are no annual fees no foreign transaction fees and you can see if you're approved with no impact to your credit score also like to point out for your first 90 days you're actually going to earn three and a half percent bitcoin back on all your purchases truly making this a no-brainer so go ahead and click my referral link in the description right down below to get up to 250 dollars in bitcoin and let's start stacking those sats shall we all right welcome back to another episode of crypto news alerts i'm your host jv how's it going crypto fam make some noise in the live chat the bitcoin bended into new macro pressures on march 4th after the bulls failed to hold that forty-two thousand dollar mark for long, as you can see here in the Bitcoin one hour candle chart. Now data from Cointelegraph Markets Pro and Trading View should Bitcoin reaching lows of 40,800 on Bitstamp Friday after a major options expiry event. An overnight performance initially showing a recovery has been stymied by worries over a nuclear power plant fire in the Ukraine. Meanwhile, stocks futures fell on the news, the severity of which was subsequently questioned. In Germany, the DAX index hit a one year low on the daily open with S&P 500 yet to commence trading. As Holger shares here on Twitter, good morning 
from Germany, where benchmark index DAX has just hit a 52-week low from recent high. Index has lost 17%, way more than S&P 500. Investors are turning their backs on Europe as the risk of stagflation increases. This means that Europe's comeback has failed yet again. That's right, in Europe, the spotlight was also on commodities with gas prices, again, touching new highs on March 3rd. So too was inflation, as Lisa points out here. Inflation data no longer matters, much for central bank policy prognostications. Evidently, Italian inflation surged to a record for a third straight month, the 6.2% in February versus the 5.5% medium estimate data released this morning's show. Yet two-year Italian yields are plunging, which you can see right here in this chart. Now, a cautious crypto ed thus laid out the near-term prognosis for Bitcoin with some trepidation, as he shares here on Crypto Twitter, not liking that extra leg down overnight. Bitcoin is in green box, but needs to reclaim 42,000 ASAP. For now, the move up only has three legs and can be considered to be a corrective bounce until we make that fifth. So really need that fifth leg. A deeper drop from here is bad news for the possibility of that fifth leg, especially when losing 40,000 again. We can skip the bullish vibes and start looking for shorts. Bullish above 42,000, bearish below 40K, which you can see right here in this chart. Let me know if you agree or disagree with the crypto analysts. Now checking out the altcoin performance. Alts have characteristically suffered as Bitcoin continued to dip with attention focused on Ethereum and its trend versus BTC, an already struggling sentiment took a further hit from the news that MetaMask was preparing to block ETH transactions in Venezuela in order to comply with government regulations. Very interesting. Check this out. By default, MetaMask accesses the blockchain via Infura, which is unavailable in certain jurisdictions due to legal compliance, a blog post announced on Thursday. And also the top 10 cryptos by market cap were led by Solana in terms of daily losses, with Solana down nearly 7%. And as I shared in the intro of the show, U.S. Senator Ted Cruz says, Texas should be ground zero for the Bitcoin and crypto industry worldwide. Let's break and go. Mass Bitcoin adoption is the game theory is in full effect in this just in. Justin Bieber's manager, Scooter Braun, has sold his Texas mansion for $18.5 million in the king of all crypto. And before I break down next breaking story of the day, Bitcoin and USDT Tether become legal tender in Lugano, Switzerland. But first, let's take a quick look at the overall crypto market. As you can see, everything is currently correcting and in the red, with Bitcoin down almost 5% for the day, trading just above $41,500. We have Ether down 6%, trading just above $2,700. Solana down 7.6%, trading just above $92.00. And 37 cents. We have Polkadot down 5.5%, trading just above $17.37. And Luna down 3%, trading just above $89.76. But all right, now let's break down our next break-in story of the day. Switzerland's southern city of Lugano plans for many local businesses to accept some cryptocurrencies as the de facto legal tender as part of a partnership with Tether USDT. That's right, speaking at the city's Plan B event on Thursday, Tether Chief Technical Officer Paolo Ardino said that the firm has set up a $3 million Swiss franc fund in collaboration with Lugano officials to encourage adoption of Bitcoin, Tether, as well as LVGA, which is a token for shops and businesses across the city. Now, he also said that the project was aimed at attracting talent from the space to Lugano and making the city a major blockchain hub in Europe. Quitting him here, we want to show that these tools, these instruments, these currencies that were created can actually be put to work in a locally controlled, vibrant environment like the city of Lugano, he shared. And in addition to allowing Lugano residents to pay their taxes using crypto, the project will extend payments to parking tickets, public services, as well as tuition fees for students, and more than 200 shops and businesses in the area are also expected to accept crypto payments for goods and services. As he announced here on Crypto Twitter, Lugano, Plan B, announced Bitcoin, Tether, and Luga stablecoin as legal tender. Here are all the things that you can pay for within a few months in the city. Now, Paolo cited the work El Salvador lawmakers had done for the adoption of cryptocurrencies. In September 2021, the country's Bitcoin law went into full effect, allowing all residents and visitors to use Bitcoin as legal tender alongside the U.S. dollar. Now, the Swiss franc remains legal tender in Lugano and across Switzerland at this time. And as part of the partnership, Tether said it would create a fund of up to 100 million Swiss francs to help finance blockchain-based startups in the region and create crypto unicorns, which are projects that reach a billion dollar valuation. Now, Polygon slash Matic will also act as an infrastructure partner for stablecoin settlements in Lugano. Pretty interesting. And with a population of roughly 63,000 people, Lugano is Switzerland's eighth largest city and will be the host of the Bitcoin World Forum Conference in October. Mass Bitcoin adoption. Let's freaking go as the game theory continues. 
worldwide. I want to give a quick shout out to iTrust Capital, the world's largest crypto IRA platform with over three and a half billion dollars in transactions. If you're looking to trade crypto tax free, look no further than iTrust. And yes, they are backed by the world's leading institutional cold storage provider, Coinbase Custody with a three hundred twenty million dollar insurance policy. So go ahead and use my referral link in the description right down below to take advantage of the number one crypto IRA provider in America. And if you sign up today, you're going to receive a hundred dollar funding reward as a free bonus. So go ahead and use my referral link in the description right down below and let's start stacking those sats tax-free. And before I break down next story of the day, is the full-blown crypto rally imminent? Macro guru Raul Powell says the conditions are mimicking the previous bull run. But first, let's take a quick look at the overall crypto market cap. Sitting just under $1.9 trillion with about $89 billion in volume. In the past 24 hours, the current Bitcoin dominance is 42.9% with the Ether dominance at 17 0.8% at checking out the top 100 cryptocurrency gainers for the week. You can see waves up about 96%. We have ANC up 42%, Rune up 59%, Luna up almost 34%, and Atom up almost 32%. And now checking out one of my favorite indicators is the Crypto Greed and Fear Index. Shows we're currently rated a 33 in fear. Yesterday was a 39, last week a 27, and last month a 28 in fear. And if you're not familiar with the Crypto Greed and Fear Index, extreme fear can be a sign. Investors are too worried. That can be a great buying opportunity like we're witnessing right now. BTFD, buy that freaking dip. And when investors are getting too greedy, that means the market is due for a correction. But all right, now let's break down our next story of the day. Real Vision CEO and global macro guru, Raul Powell, says that the price action of the crypto market is signaling bullish times ahead. Let's go. Powell tells his almost 900,000 Twitter followers that the crypto market is currently mirroring March of 2020, which was during the early phase of the pandemic when asset prices crashed before staging a strong recovery. Now, the global macro guru says that while in March of 2020, the concern was the economic shutdown as a result of the pandemic. The risk now includes high inflation, surging oil prices, potential interest rate increases, and a contractionary monetary policy or quantitative tightening, quitting him here on crypto Twitter. This moment in crypto feels a lot like March 2020. Back then, we threw the worst possible news at it, which was a pandemic and a global shutdown, and it fell very sharply, but failed to make a new low. Back then, Bitcoin turned up 10 days before the NDX, but bonds led crypto. Cut to today, negative 8% inflation, oil at $105, seven hikes priced in, plus quantitative tightening with GS calling for 11 hikes and a war. Crypto failed to make new lows. Time to watch carefully. Yes, this is a different time, but price is suggesting that macro might get more positive for crypto. And he also says bonds are suggesting the same. Growth is going to evaporate. It's a bit early to tell, but pay attention. It might also be the end of the tech sell off soon. So there you have it. Let me know if you agree or disagree with the macro guru. And now let's break down our next story of the day. Legendary investor Bill Miller says the collapse of the Russian ruble is very bullish for the king of all crypto. That's right. Legacy investor, fund manager, and philanthropist Bill Miller believes that the financial sanctions imposed on Russia could cause Bitcoin's price to soar. He pointed out that gold is the only reserve asset, the largest country by landmass controls on its own, meaning that Bitcoin might gain traction in the days to come. That's right. The military conflict in Ukraine changed tides in the the financial world drastically. NATO and the EU declared economic war on Putin's regime. The United States, UK, Germany, and many others cut their monetary connection with Russia and excluded the many Russian banks from the major payment system, SWIFT. And as a result of those sanctions, the ruble plummeted by over 25%. While Russian citizens started looking for alternative financial instruments to preserve their savings, Bitcoin trading volumes in the region spiked to record levels. And in a recent interview for CNBC, the former chairman of Leg Mason Capital Management, Bill Miller, outlined that Russia keeps 16% of its reserves in dollars and 32% in euros. Those assets are managed by people who want to do them harm. He further stated that the only part of their reserves which other nations cannot control is gold, which is 22%. And according to Miller, these metrics are a very bullish sign for the king of all crypto. Quoting him here from this interview, they have almost 50% of their reserves in currencies that are controlled by people who want to do them harm. They have 22% in gold, and that is the only part of their reserve that other countries can't control. It's very bullish for Bitcoin. That's right. Say it again. He further pointed out Bitcoin's limited supply, which makes it a hedge against inflation. And commenting on altcoins, he says they are much different than the primary crypto, and investors should view them as venture assets. And despite a skeptical Bitcoin opinion of the past, the American has turned into a keen supporter of Bitcoin more recently. In May of last year, he argued that investing in it is safe even during price drops. In fact, traders should find it more attractive when the value has decreased, as he shares here. If I like something at higher prices, 
It is a safe bet. I will like it even more at lower prices. Touche, BTFD, buy that freaking dip. And several months later, he made a somewhat interesting comparison between Bitcoin and gold. And in his view, the digital asset resembles a luxurious sports car Ferrari, while the precious metal is old fashioned like a horse and buggy. Great comparison, isn't it? And earlier this year, the legacy investor admitted he had allocated 50% of his portfolio to Bitcoin. I'd actually like to clear this up because in the interview, he clarifies he initially invested just a few percent of his portfolio, maybe back in 2014, into Bitcoin. And Bitcoin has outpaced the rest of his portfolio, so it now stands at over 50% and will continue to climb, if you're to ask me. And now, before I break down our final story of the day, DeVere Group CEO Nigel Green says the Russia-Ukraine war can push the Bitcoin price to $50,000 soon. But first, I want to remind you to smash that show more button right below this video in the description for a detailed analysis of what's going on in the crypto market. This goes for all 1,000 plus videos right here on my YouTube channel. Also, some very helpful resources for you to plug into, including my crypto merch store, now live at merch.cryptonewsalerts.net. Also, the daily letter, which goes out to over 30,000 subscribers every single day. To subscribe, visit letter.cryptonewsalerts.net. Also, a blog I update daily, which can be found at cryptonewsyes.com. Also, be sure to smash that subscribe button and ring that bell to turn on all notifications to help support the channel. And of course, you can find me on all the major podcasts and platforms from Spotify to iTunes to Google Play. And if you're listening to the pod, be sure to check out the YouTube channel at CryptoNewsAlerts.net for the full premium experience with video. And of course, you can follow me on Crypto Twitter, Facebook, Telegram, and TikTok. So wherever you're at, be sure to follow me there. But all right, now let's break down our final story of the day. Nigel Green, the CEO of Devere Group, believes the Russian-Ukraine conflict could be the catalyst that propels a surge for the Bitcoin price. The executive suggested the Bitcoin reaching 50000 by the end of this month is not out of the question. That's right. Despite the Russian invasion of Ukraine and the peace uncertainty across Europe, Bitcoin's price started climbing recently. The asset's USD value shot up more than 15% over the last five days. In fact, in a 24-hour period, we shot up 17%, which is the greatest daily gain since February of last year. As many argue that this increase is a result of the financial sanctions imposed on Russia and the following crash of the ruble. Now, a supporter of that idea is CEO of the financial advisory firm, Devere Group, Nigel Green. He opined that the military conflict has caused significant financial upheaval and companies, individuals, and government agencies started looking for alternatives to traditional monetary systems, as he shares here. As banks close, ATMs run out of money, threats of personal savings being taken to pay for the war, and the major international payment system SWIFT is weaponized, amongst other factors, the case for a viable, decentralized, borderless, tamper-proof, unconfiscated monetary system has been laid bare. And assuming the Western world keeps imposing penalties on Russia, Bitcoin might tap $50,000 by the end of the month, Green forecasted. However, he also says it's too early to believe that the primary crypto could reach its all-time high of nearly 70000 registered in November 2021. It is worth noting that the Vera Group CEO has been quite accurate in his previous forecast. Last summer, he predicted that Bitcoin price would hit or even surpass its all-time high of 65000 by the end of 2021. And lo and behold, in November is when we hit the all-time high of 69 k Now, digital assets have been involved in the Russia-Ukraine dispute as numerous companies and individuals donated crypto to aid Ukraine's defense. Contributions surpassed $35 million with some of the renowned people that took part include Polkadot's founder, Gavin Wood. He sent $5 million worth of Polkadot to the Ukrainian government. Also, the Binance CEO, Shangping Zhao, I believe also sent $10 million to Ukraine. And apart from Polkadot, the authorities accepted donations of Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Tether. And they more recently added Dogecoin and Solana. That's right. You can now donate using dog money. Hilarious, isn't it? Now, nevertheless, many expressed concerns that Russia could employ the asset class as well to bypass financial sanctions implemented by the West. Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse, though, explained why such a scenario may be hard to occur. In his view, cryptocurrency exchanges are highly professional and work with banking partners and regulatory authorities, right? And they have established several stringent measures, including KYC, which is know your customer, and anti-money laundering policies to prevent bad actors from using such services. So there you have it. What are your thoughts surrounding Nigel Green's $50,000 Bitcoin price prediction before the end of this month? Let me know in the comments right down below. Now for the top three comments from yesterday's episode, Inner Dino wrote, thanks JV, it's great seeing the price going up, but it's a shame it's on the back of another war in Europe. 
Slava, Ukraine. Exactly, fam. Thanks for tuning in, and I appreciate your continued support. Our next featured comment comes from eCoin, who wrote, Aloha, JV. Awesome crypto news rundown. Not enough time in the day to catch all the news, to be honest. So crypto news alerts is a blessing. Good to see all those big wigs capitulate to the king of all crypto. Let's freaking go. Aloha, fam. Always a pleasure. I greatly appreciate your continued support. Hodl. And our third and final featured comment comes from Logan, who wrote, Ken Griffin was wrong about Bitcoin, and he is also wrong about payment for order flow. He is corrupt, to say the least. True that. Much respect, fam. One love. And to be featured on tomorrow's episode, drop me a comment right down below.